Okay. So yun, yung pinagkwento ko yun sa Ebola. No? So sometimes the, the, there's a jump between one species to another. But, but that is due to the mutation of the virus. So there was a moving out about Ebola. No? Uh, I think it was it, it is outbreak. So dun sa movie, so nag-jump yung yung virus uh, nag naging uh, infectious from chimpanzee nag 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 uh, nagkaroon yung humans tapos nagkaroon yung mutation na naging airborne so yun yung delikado no what if yung ebola is airborne kasi ngayon yung e yung ebola nagalag pa nagalag pa ba ako Nagalag pa, pa ako? Can you hear me, Ngayon guys? Po, sir. Ngayon, okay na po. Okay. So, yun nga. Sa movie, yung virus nag-mutate na naging airborne siya. So, imagine mo yung Ebola na airborne. Ang bilis kumalat ng disease na yun. So, yun yung story ng outbreak. Maganda movie siya para makita nyo yung mga protocols yung level 4 kasi pag mag Ebola outbreak yung mga health workers level 4 yung PPE hindi pwede yung pipitsuging ano lang PPE ang gagamitin dapat level 4 na biosafety suit okay So it's an example. This is a, uh, a an electron micrograph of a bacteriophage. So ito yung mga virus that will only attack bacteria. So uh, unique yung structure niya, no? So para siya robotic, uh, para siya robot, no? So meron siyang uh, capsid, tapos sa loob yung genetic material mo so either, either uh, so you have the genetic material inside and then you have this sheet tapos may tail fibers na kumakabit dun sa surface no ng cell okay so ito unique yung uh, structure ng bacteriophage So, uh, a virus uh, may have, may cause the cell death. So, pwedeng magkaroon ng rupture yung cell, no? Through lysis. So, uh, the cell will burst open and release the virus. Okay? So, that may happen. And then, there are other viruses that may lie dormant. So, they will alter the cell's uh, genome and uh, become uh, Latin. So, nandun pa rin yung virus and hindi pa namamatay yung cell. Or, or they, can cause, uh, they can cause little noticeable effect dun sa cell. Okay. We, uh, I have already discussed this kanina, no? You can have viruses that can be transmitted from animal host to human host. So that can happen through mutation. So alam naman natin yung mga virus ang bilis mag-mutate. So yung protein spikes niya pag nag-mutate, uh, iba na hindi na iba na antibodies yung mag 
ano sa kanya. Uh, yung ibang, kumbaga, iba na siyang ibang vaccine na yung mag-work well sa kanya. No? So, hindi, so, any mutation dun sa protein spikes will be difficult uh, for us to contain. So, yung mga mutations na yan, so, that will bring about yung uh, zoonosis. So, uh, yung AIDS, nang ganin sa chimpanzee, yung Ebola din, ganin sa uh, primates. And then you have uh, yung H1N1, yung Spanish flu, at saka yung 2009 epidemic. Uh, sabi nila, galing sa birds. No? So, may hypothesis lang na galing sa birds, while others uh, galing sa pig. So, yun yung mga hypothesis about those outbreaks. So, possible din yung uh, reverse zoonosis. So, yung uh, humans pwede mag-infect na, yung virus na galing sa humans pwede mag-infect ng animals. So, how can, how can a virus be transmitted? So, one is through direct contact. So, pag uh, nag-cough or nag-sneeze, so nandun sa respiratory droplets, ma-inhale mo, or uh, umaching sa, directly sa mouth, sa, sa, ano mo, sa, sa face mo. So, yung respiratory droplets will find its way into your uh respiratory system as well. So, kung common cold yan, so, kumaching, so, yung respiratory droplets uh, pupunta sa mga uh, sa upper respiratory system nyo, uh, yun, magkakaroon rin ng common cold yung, yung person. Okay? So, that's direct contact. So, pwede rin through uh, sa epithelial cells, so pag-touch nung uh, through abrasion sa skin or kahit sa eyes, so pwede yung pumasok, mag-penetrate yung virus. Okay? So, yun. So, through direct contact. Pwede din through indirect contact. So, yung fomites, ito yung mga mga materials na yung mga surfaces sa nabawa or cloth so na touch ng person ng isang ang isang surface tapos nahawakan nyo. so yan yung example ng uh, ano indirect contact with fomites tapos pwede rin yung vector so through a vector an animal that transmits a pathogen from one host to another so that's another uh, so, yung mosquito, halimbawa, nagtatransmit ng disease. So, that's an example of a vector. So, yung common na nag, nagtatransfer ng mga virus is uh, our insects. So, sa arthropods. So, you have uh, mosquitoes, ticks, mga fleas or mga flies. So these are typical vectors. And there are two ways in which they can transmit the virus. So yung, so one way is through, uh, is through contact with the virus. No? So mechanical transmission ang tawag doon. So halimbawa, yung fly dumapo halimbawa sa sa skin ng taong may Ebola. Tapos yung fly na yon, uh, dadapo naman sa sa skin ng uh, ng normal human or uh, human na walang sakit. So, matatransmit niya physically yung virus na yon. So, yun yung mechanical transmission. So that's when an, uh, an insect or an arthropod carries a viral pathogen on the outside of its body 
and transmit it to a new host by physical contact. So through, ano lang, touching. So outside lang the body. And then there can be biological transmission, no? So dito, usually, kinahagat na yung, ano, may blood, may blood feast na, may blood meal yung insects. So yung mosquito, uh, mag, uh, kukuha ng blood from the from the host so in that in that procedure what will happen is yung uh, virus or yung pathogen sa loob niya matatransmit dun sa uh, host okay so pag biological transmission nasa loob ng nasa loob ng arthropod yung mismo virus Okay, so take a long, uh, I will just uh, I will just accept a few people and then I will screenshot then. Screenshot ko lang yung mga tao dito. Okay, so continuing. So yung structure ng virus, so some, some, some can be small. So 20 nanometers wide. So that's around 200 atoms across. So yung smallest usually yung polyvirus. And then you can have large ones. So around the 900 nanometers. That's around 9,000 atoms across. So, example of that is uh, the smallpox uh, virus. So, uh, definitely, mas maliit pa siya kaysa prokaryotic. Kasi nga, viruses are known to attack uh, prokaryotic uh, cells. So, uh, mas maliit siya kaysa prokaryotic cells. So, ito yung mga structures natin sa uh, different structures ng mga virus. Yung pinakamaliit natin, as you can see. So, dito may kita natin, ito yung uh, polio, polio virus. So, that's around uh, 20 uh, nanometers. Tapos yung mga malalaki. So, yung smallpox virus. So that's around uh, 900 uh, nanometers. Okay. So malaking bagay ang, develop, ang discovery ng electron microscope or construction ng electron microscope. So they were able to uh, finally uh, find out na yung, yung structure ng tobacco mosaic virus. And uh, he learned that it is made up of RNA and protein. Okay? So, dito sa lesson natin, no, maraming, uh, I hope you remember the important disease. And then, uh, remember if it's made up of RNA or DNA, yung genetic material. So, I'll I'll be uh, concentrating on a few. So, at least yun lang ang malaman nyo para sa quiz. Okay? So, you have to know what type of genetic material uh, the uh, virus is made up of. 
So yung in, sa influenza is made up of R, uh, RNA then. So in 1943, he was uh, able to isolate influenza B, uh, influenza B virus. So yan yung naka uh, tulong sa paggawa ng influenza flu vaccine. Uh, so ang problem lang sa mga ano no sa mga influenza vaccine. Um, yung nag inokopodjust ng influenza back, uh, vaccine hindi sila sure kung anong strain so more on ano sila more on statistical data parang hinula nila kung ano yung magiging uh, magiging variant ng flu during a specific season so more on ano sila hindi sila hindi nila ma hindi nila ma a certain to a certain degree na itong variant na to ang lalabas so yung flu vaccine is more of a no, uh, based on statistical statistical data yung huhulaan nila kung anong virus ang lalabas kung anong variant ng influ, uh, ng influenza ang lalabas Kasi marami ng strains ng influenza. Okay. So yun, he was able to develop, uh, help in the development of influenza vaccine. And uh, his discovery was the, uh, uh, was the reason why he was awarded the Nobel Prize in the field of uh, virology. So malaking bagay yan. Kasi yung Spanish flu nga, yung H1N1, uh, malaking mystery sa mga scientists. And the discovery of the nature of virus uh, uh, naka, nakatulong sa pag-understand ng disease. Okay, so again, as mentioned, yung sa virus particle, your virion, it has either either the DNA or RNA. Tapos protected yan ng protein coat called the capsid. And the capsid in turn is made up of protein subunits called capsomere. Okay? Tapos, uh, minsan, pag nagbabad off, so, try ko i-draw. Medyo pangit lang yung drawing ko. No? So, let's say this is the cell. Tapos pag may uh, viral protein ka dyan, so mag-alis, mag, mag uh, pag-alis niya, sasama yung part ng lipid layer nung, lipid layer nung mismong cell. So, yung lipid mismo, hindi, hindi yung gawa ng protein, no? Ga, uh, gawa siya dun sa host. So, nang galing yung lipid layer sa host. So, may mga virus na may viral envelope na gawa sa lipid layer ng host dahil sa pag-bud off nung uh, pro, uh, yung viral uh, virion na yun. So, that's because of the lipid of the host. And there are some viruses na wala namang envelope. Okay, so hindi siya common sa lahat. And then, ito, you have protein uh, spikes. So these are projections dun sa protein. So dito nagkakaroon ng uh, attachment yung antibodies para, ano, uh, para ma-mark, markahan para i-attack ng immune system. So ito yung mga antigens. Ito yung ginagawa ng mga um, mRNA vaccines, no? Di ba? Yung sa COVID-19, meron kang particular protein spikes na nag-form nag ng antibodies yung katawan natin. So, ang ginagawa ng mga ng uh, mRNA na vaccine, so, magko-code siya for the specific protein 
And then, yung protein na yun, uh, pag na-form na ng cell, mag react na yung immune system natin. So, mag-form na antibodies. So, the next time, uh, so, the next time we have the actual disease, meron ng antibodies yung katawan natin to fight off the infection. So, yun yung gamit mo. Uh, yung mRNA vaccine. Yung iba naman, uh, yung sa AstraZeneca, so, ginamit niya yung uh, adenovirus galing sa chimpanzee, tapos uh, yun ang parang nilagyan ng spikes na due to the due to the COVID-19 so specific siya sa COVID-19 na spikes so siya yung nag-replicate so mag-form pa rin ng antibodies yan because of the uh, protein spikes so itong protein spikes uh, napaka importante yan sa sa in infection kasi kung magkakaroon ng variation yung spikes hindi na mag-work yung hindi na kasing effective yung vaccine kasi yun nga kung mag-iiba yung structure ng proteins dun sa spikes then ibig sabihin hindi na hindi na, hindi na gagana yung antibodies na na form mo dun sa vaccine okay eh ang bilis magmutate nga ng mga mga viruses and one of the mutations ang pag-change ng protein ng structure ng protein spikes so there are two categories of viruses based on uh, general composition you have a non enveloped virus So you have non-enveloped virus. So yung, yung uh, protection ng dun sa nucleic acid, yung capsid. And then as mentioned earlier, galing sa host, uh, kasama yung lipid layer. So you have the lipid layer, the nucleic acid, and the capsid. So the envelope is basically uh, a phospholipid membrane that was that came from the host cell, as I've explained uh, previously. So when the virion buds off, you have the lipid layer nakasama dun sa envelope. So the extensions, uh, the protein extensions, which we call spikes, so these are extended outward and away from the capsid. Uh, so these are the ones that uh, uh, form the, so our body creates antibodies for these spikes. So sa influenza virus, meron kang hemoglobin spikes, which we call H. Or we have also enzymes like uh, neuraminidase, uh, N, which we call N. So yun yung H at saka N. Ang nagde-define ng mga uh, mutations or yung variations ng iba-ibang influenza virus. So, yan, nilelabel na lang yan na itong mutation na to, H1N1. Tapos nag-detate siya. So, H2N2. So, that's the that's how we that's how the scientists label those uh, mutations sa influenza virus. So this allows the virus to detach from the cell during the release of the neurons. So itong H1N1, 1918 and 2009. So we know 1918 historically as the Spanish flu. So 2009 then. H2N2, uh, 1957. And then nagkaroon ng variations, H3N2, 1968. So dialian sa protein spikes. Okay, so example ng atadenovirus. So meron kang uh, capsid, so capsomere, yung mga each individual subunit. 
So, pinoprotektahan niya yung genetic material. Tapos, meron kang mga spikes. So, these are made up of uh, glycoproteins. So, uh, itong mga protein spikes, yung gamit, ginagamit ng uh, ginagamit ng virus para ma-attach dun sa host cell niya. So, ano-ano bang shape ng mga capsids? No? So, they may vary. So, one is helical. So, ano siya, rod shape siya. At eksakto lang yung genetic material niya. So, tingnan lang natin para may idea kayo kung itsura. So, ito yung rod shape. So, helical structure. So, naka, nasa loob yung uh, genetic material. And pwede din yung polyhedral. So, uh, icosahedral yan. 20 sides. Tapos uh, may 12 na vertices. So, example yan is poliovirus at uh, yung rhinovirus. Yung rhinovirus na cause ng uh, sipon. Okay? Also, maraming virus ang capable na mag-cause ng common cold. So, kaya, kaya walang vaccine sa common cold eh, kasi iba-iba yung iba-iba yung mga uh, virus na nagkakos ng upper respiratory infection. So, there can also be complex structures. So, you saw a while ago yung bacteriophage, napaka-complex na structure. So, uh, those are the different types of, uh, th those are the different shapes of the capsids. Okay, so pag cylindrical or rod shape, so the genome fits well inside the length of the capsid. And then you can have polyhedral, like uh, yung shape niya will have, will take the shape of a icosahedron. So may 20 sides yung icosahedron, tapos may 12 vertices or corners. So, yun yung shape ng no, uh, polyhedral capsid. So, meron mga complex structures. So, like in the case of bacteriophage, so meron kang polyhedral head and meron kang sheet na nag-connect ng head to tail, of, uh, head to the tail fibers. Doon nag-attach doon sa virus do nag attach yung virus dun sa host cell. So, meron kang tail fibers and tail pins which allows the virus to, to attach to the host cell. <clears throat> so, ito yung mga different structures ng, uh, ng virus. Okay. So, maraming information dito, no? So, the, the important thing here, especially for the common ones, no? As, uh, as health workers, so, kung uh, nurse man or nutritionist, so you have to be familiar with, uh, with the different viruses. So, itong flu virus, yung influenza, no? Uh, sa quiz, ang lalabas lang, ang importante, hindi na to, hindi na masyado yung family. So, you have to be familiar with the sample virus and the genome. So, yun yung importante, importante yung tatandaan, tatandaan, no? So, especially, you have the common uh, herpes uh, virus. So, yun, I brought up, um, sample uh, virus niya is simplex virus. So, yung herpe, herpes so, yung oral uh, herpes at saka genital herpes. Diyan galing. So, gawa siya sa double-stranded DNA. Tapos envelope siya. Okay? So, yan yung sa herpes.
so one uh, one one source or one uh, uh, virus that can cause the common cold is the atadenovirus, no? So, yan ay uh, makakos ng common cold, so may upper respiratory infection ka. So this is made up of a DNA. So double stranded siya pero naked. So one of the virus that can cause uh, stomach flu. So gastroenteritis caused by the real virus. So this causes severe diarrhea. So this is a uh, yung genome niya, double stranded DNA and it's uh, naked. So do you have other virus like uh, the rotavirus? It can it causes a uh, gastroenteritis. Ah, sorry, ito na yung double-stranded RNA na naked. Pero itong single-stranded DNA, example ito, yung uh, adeno-associated dependo-parvovirus. So this causes uh, respiratory infection. So single-stranded DNA and you have a naked, it's naked, walang envelope. Here sa uh, ano uh, meron kang dalawang klasing RNA so dalawang possible strand, uh, sense no you have the positive na uh, single stranded RNA and it's na naked so example nito yung virus na nagko-host na hepatitis so you have the hepatovirus and then yung common cold you have the rhinovirus so again Pareho sa kanila, uh, single-stranded RNA, and then meron kang tinatawag na plus yung sense. I will explain that later. Tapos meron kang, so that's uh, single-stranded naked. And you have si uh, single-stranded na envelope. So examples ito, yung nagkakos ng uh, encephalitis and uh, Hemorrhagic fever, so that's a single-stranded RNA in envelope. Rubella, which is caused by the rubivirus. And then you have uh, the HIV virus, so under uh, lentivirus. So the acquired immune deficiency syndrome, so ito ay positive single-stranded RNA envelope. So, ito yung tinatawag na retrovirus, no? Na-insert niya yung uh, genomic material niya sa host, sa DNA ng host. And then, ito nga, negative uh, SS, uh, single-stranded RNA. The envelope, example niya, yung influenza. So that is the cause of the common flu. And your rabies caused by Lisa virus. Okay? So yun yung mga important thing lalabas sa quiz. So let's look at the life cycle of this, uh, of this virus with the animal host. So first, the phage will interact with the specific host cell receptors. So dahil sa spike, protein spike na yan, dun siya mag attach sa host cell receptors. And then what will happen is there will be penetration. So the animal uh, virus will enter through endocytosis. So may engulf ng, uh, ng cell yung virus. So, papasok mismo yung virus or either mag-fuse yung membrane ng virus tapos mag-spill yung uh, contents sa loob. Okay? So, pag pumasok sa loob, there will be an uncoating. So, the viral contents are released. And then, depende ko nung genetic material, uh, your viral nucleic acid and proteins are synthesized. 
and eventually you will form the new virus. So uh, you have new mature variants. Uh, uh, this will form the new virus. No? So magma mature na yung uh, variants mo, and they will be released by uh, the rupture of the cell or the lysis of the cell or through budding. Okay, so hindi lang host specific ang virus, no? It can be uh, tissue specific. So pag tissue specific, mayroong particular type ng cells ang iatak ng uh, virus. So let's look at the life cycle of, uh, of the influenza virus, no? So una, so attach siya dun sa surface ng cell through the spikes. So ang target niya is the epithelial cell. And uh, eventually through uh, endocytosis, it will penetrate. And then there will be uncoating. So viral contents are released. Okay? So yung RNA ng uh, virus na yon it will enter the nucleus and then it will be replicated by yung RNA polymerase. So yung mismong dala niyang, uh, dala niyang enzyme gagawa ng uh, copies ng uh, RNA. So may bago na ang particles to assemble a new uh, virion. So new phage particles are assembled and eventually, uh, new viral particles are made. So, meron ko ng bagong virion. So, pwedeng sumama yung lipid uh, layer. So, yun yung magiging envelope niya. So, in this process, uh, magpaproduce pa yung cell, no? So, habang buhay pa yung cell, it, 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 it is not killed in the process. Pero, pag naubos na yung resources, it's possible that the cell will die pag continuous yung production. Okay, let's uh, let's have another session. Uh, patapos na to.